Hi everyone, my name is Kylie and I'm super excited to be here with you today. I first just wanna say thank you to all the classrooms that are tuning in to the My Journeys class chat today. Teachers, just a quick reminder that we've enabled live closed captioning for all of our class chats going forward. Today, we're excited to welcome Christopher Lopez who spends most of his time trying to catch people doing bad things with computers as part of Tanium's Security Operations Center team. Teachers, make sure to put your students' questions in the chat um, for the Q&A, and we'll be able to ask Chris those questions at the end of the talk. Now let's start with a fun icebreaker to get us started. I was thinking about candy this morning. Who doesn't want candy for breakfast? If I had candy for breakfast, it would be a Snickers bar. Chris, what about you? What would you have uh, for breakfast if you had to choose candy? So I was going to say Snickers, you completely took <laughs> that for me. So I had to think back. Um, I love peanut butter, so it's going to have to be Reese's. Oh, got to love those as well. Also, well, can you just start by telling us about your work? What exactly is your job title and what do you do? Yeah, uh, so my official job title is security analyst. I work, as you mentioned, in a security operations center. Uh, it's just a fancy way of saying a bunch of people that work together to try to find bad things and protect a uh, company. Uh, so I consider my role to be more aligned with like a computer detective. I'm trying to identify or see when something bad happens or maybe try to catch something before something bad happens. And then we basically work together, my team and I, to let people know about what's going on and we analyze things like that. That is so cool. Could you tell me a little more about what your typical day would be like for a computer detective? Is it like a real detective? Do things change depending on like your case file or what's happening in the world? Yeah, uh, actually, let me share my screen here and I'll start with like my battle station so you guys can see, you know, what it is that I'm trying to do and work with. A battle uh, station. Oh, I'm so excited to yeah. see. So here is where I spend most of my time is in front of this computer. I hope that you are able to see it. Um, I hope I'm sharing right, perfect, awesome. So um, a lot of my day is spent right here, standing. I got a standing desk recently. Uh, I didn't wanna sit down. I know a lot of us have dealt with working from home recently and that's something that's helped me. Um, so I spent a lot of time here looking at logs. So essentially um, what that is is, okay, perfect example would be, uh, whenever you log into your computer, uh, example, like Windows computer, and you type in your password, your computer basically writes a note of that somewhere on a computer. So it basically says, oh, Christopher Lopez logged in at this time, you know, from this location. I spent a lot of my time looking at those records that computers write about stuff that happens. And I try to use all of that information to tell a story. So I try to translate what a computer is saying about stuff that happened into something that is more understandable and something I can have a conversation with other people about. Oh, so this and this happened at this time, which led to this thing occurring. Wow, that's, I love that, uh, the telling a story. I think that's something you see in a lot of computing related jobs. I am curious though, what is your absolute favorite thing though about being a computer detective if you had to pick one thing? So solving problems and trying to understand how things work. Uh, so this is an example of where I spend most of my time. This is just like a log file. Um, and this is looking at specific logins. This is more for like Mac, like, you know, Apple computers. Uh, but this is where I spend most of my time is looking at how things are written to a computer and like how that stuff looks like. I love understanding why something happened the way that it did when it happened and trying to answer those very basic questions that we try to answer to figure out, you know, what's going on. So this is an example of where I'm the happiest is looking at things like this. Another example would be looking at another set of logs in a different machine and trying to piece together, what does this mean? And trying to answer the question of, is this bad? And how can I determine if something is bad? And uh, yeah, so a lot of problem solving. Nice. I'm curious, how did you decide to become this computer detective? Oh, 
See, that's an amazing question uh, because it all just worked out. Honestly, I had no idea that I was going to fall in love with cybersecurity. Um, I started out, you know, in IT. So IT is more focused on at least what I used to do was more uh, fixing computers and basically making sure that computers are running for a company and making sure that everything is running the way it's supposed to. Uh, so I started studying security as a hobby. I got a lab set up at my house, you know, with a couple computers that were very old. And I just started trying to understand like how things work. And what ended up happening was, and lucky for me, um, I ended up talking to the right people that led me in the right direction of like, hey, you can actually have a career with that hobby. And I, I had no idea that those two things can actually coexist like that. Uh, so it ended up working out perfect for me. Nice. Could you tell me a little bit about why cybersecurity is important and perhaps how it affects your community? Yeah. Um, so to me, cybersecurity is important because a lot of people that are in my role, specifically as analysts that are helping companies try to solve computer related problems, is everyone benefits from computers being more secure or networks being more secure. And that's basically what we try to do. So in my job, as I mentioned earlier, we try to let our leadership know. So like our managers and their managers know about things that we discover, which then leads to a change in the company potentially, uh, which ends up anyone that uses a service that is you know, created by us or created by another team, it's safer to use. That's awesome. I am so glad there's people like you making the internet safer um, and our computers itself. I am also kind of curious, what skills or abilities does your work require? Is that something you had to build up before you took this job or is it something you built on the job? Uh, so to me, the most important skill that every human being has, because this is like innate in the way that we are, is curiosity, just being curious about stuff. I spend so much of my time just trying to answer the question of why, like, why is this the way that it is? So that led me to security. It works out perfectly because I was like, why does this like hack or whatever you want to say, why does this thing work that way? Like, how is a computer able to be taken advantage of by someone that's malicious or trying to do something bad? Like, how does that look? And how can we look and find things like that? So curiosity to me is one of the biggest things. And that led perfectly into another skill set that I think is important. And that is just trying to understand how computers work, like a fundamental understanding of computers and just digging into why certain things happen this, a certain way at a certain time is super important. And that's all because of uh, your own curiosity. Oh, I love that. Being curious is just such a great skill and ability. Now, I want to do a quick reminder to teachers, please use the Q&A to post any questions you have for Chris. Um, and now let's jump to the next question, which is kind of fun. I am really curious about what you do outside of work. Do you have any hobbies? I'd love to hear more. Uh, yeah, um, when I'm not staring at a computer screen, which I love, by the way, I don't mean that in a bad way. Um, I spend a lot of my time staring at a TV screen because I love playing video games. So there's that. Uh, I have a 10 year old and him and I are constantly playing video games together. I can share uh, here something really quickly just to kind of showcase, uh, you know, where I spend a lot of my time outside of work. Uh, here we go. Let me do that. So this is my second battle station, in my opinion. This is where I spent a lot of my time playing games with my son. I mean, right now we're playing like the latest Pokemon game together. Uh, Pokemon Legends is fantastic. I love it. Um, and this is something that I use to, you know, uh, wind down after working, even though I, I love what I do. Another so example. Cool. Yeah. Um, also, I, I really love to run uh, and be outside. You know, we spent a lot of time with technology. Uh, especially now. And uh, luckily, I actually ran um, a race with my son recently. He joined me. And since I live in Orlando, I get to go to all the really cool theme parks here. Uh, and here goes an example of that running and taking my son to, you know, to Universal because Harry Potter is amazing. And uh, we get to do that together. Dang, I'm jealous. I want to go to a theme park right now. <laughs> Let's all go. We can get on a plane, right? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm curious, Chris, when you talked earlier about your job, 
how do you work with other people? You talked about, you know, looking at the logs, like, do you have to have meetings to discuss your findings? What do other people in cybersecurity do? Yeah, so that's the beauty of this field, in my opinion. And that's, it's such a vast field. There's so many different things that people can do. I, for example, am not really a developer or someone that writes code on a day-to-day basis, but I work all the time with another team that's basically part of the security team uh, as engineers. And they help build the tools that our team uses in order to investigate things, which is super cool. And if someone really enjoys coding, I mean, that is such an amazing field to get into because it's part of security. You're just building a really awesome things and new things. That is so awesome. I actually got a cool question from Mrs. Carr's classroom. Going back to your hobbies, what video games do you play? I know you mentioned Pokemon, but what other video games do you and your son play? Uh, So we have been spending a lot of time recently playing a lot of old games. Uh, I'm trying to get him into uh, a lot of the collection that's on the Switch right now for uh, the SNES, the Super uh, Nintendo. Uh, so we just finished uh, Metroid, like a really old oh, game. Fun. Like, yeah. It's fantastic. I, I love it. Uh, and it's actually really hard, more difficult than I remember. I think we're getting a little bit lazy with our games now. Everything is so helpful uh, with games. And yeah, another one uh, that came out recently, I've been playing a lot of Halo multiplayer. I know that's more for like older, uh, you know, people, but it's been fantastic. Uh, So there's been a lot of that recently. That's fun. Maybe some of the teachers play Halo and some of the students might be older. You might be playing Halo. Hey, there you go. Who knows? Awesome. Well, I have another classroom question from Carlin's class. They want to know, how do you actually stop the hackers or the hacks from happening? I know you talked a little bit about finding kind of the breadcrumbs in the logs and such, but is there anything you could do to prevent it from happening? Or is that what you were saying the engineers do? Yeah, so that there's an entire cycle with how that works. So first you need to identify that something is even happening in the first place. Once you identify, meaning you just see that something bad may be happening, then you move towards like, how do I like contain this? Like, how do I stop this? Let's say that it's, for example, like a file, a virus that's spreading. First thing would be like, how do I stop this from spreading, right? right? In order to basically stop the quote unquote, the bleeding of that situation. And then from there you move towards how do I mitigate this, right? Like meaning how do I fix this from happening in the future, right? So that's where the preventive cycle comes in. Like uh, that would be like a lot of things you may hear in the news about like, oh, this is new vulnerability, right? And then you patch that vulnerability, like you do an update, like you see like how Windows, for example, would be like, hey, there's a new update. Uh, usually that comes with things that are made to secure that, pro- that application better. So you may patch something, for example, or you may upgrade something in your environment mm. to prevent that from happening in the future. Yeah. Uh, so it's a cycle, detection, containment, uh, being able to stop hackers is well let me say malicious hackers because i think that there's a uh sometimes a negative feeling towards the word hacker i consider myself to be a hacker but a good one a lot of people in the field consider themselves to be that too a hacker to me is just someone that likes to understand how something works and likes to see how they can change it to make it work for them in a certain way um so catching and stopping is a little bit difficult because sometimes when you find something this may have occurred months ago or this may have occurred like, you know, a week ago. So you may not have the ability to stop at that moment, but you can prevent from there or you can attempt to prevent things from happening. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think that's a great reminder that hacking, there's bad hackers and good hackers, sometimes called ethical hackers. Yeah. And if you are interested in trying to like solve puzzles and break things, computer security is a great field because you can really try to break things as an ethical hacker. And then that helps these computers and internet products to become more security hardened so that there's less chance for the bad guys to get in. Awesome. I've got a question here from David Higley. When did you start your cybersecurity journey? I know you talked about how you weren't expecting it, um, but yeah, when did you get started? Um, 
That's a good question. I, I feel like I'm getting a little bit older now. I got to think back like what year uh, it was, but it wasn't right after, um, you know, high school. It took a while for me to go to college. It wasn't something immediate. I went to college when I was probably, I think maybe like 22, 23. So there was definitely a big gap. I didn't get into cybersecurity until around the time that I was like 25. I was fortunate enough to land into that role um, without much uh, college behind me. Nice. Um, I've got another question from Odyssey Charter. How can we as users of technology use this type of log analysis to make ourselves safer? Is that something you can do or would you advise any other tools to make yourself safer using computers and the internet? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, I'm not sure how log analysis translates to that. Um, I think log analysis really helps when you're trying to like troubleshoot, for example, like you're trying to figure out why something is not working the way that it does. Uh, from a more, how can I be more secure uh, perspective? I'm not sure that that is like, an, like a direct correlation to that. Uh, personally, I mean, there's so many uh, things out there to try to make you uh, safer on the internet. Um, I would say one of the things that I am always talking about from like just a general basis, uh, just given the fact that we leverage, we use so many things now that are like, you know, on the internet, uh, like whatever it is, like we're trying to access like our Google account, we're trying to access like our Microsoft account or school account. I would say that one of the biggest things that you can do to protect yourself is to use some kind of like password vault protector or something like that. Yeah. Uh, somewhere you can store all this stuff. I know one password. I don't know any other passwords because everything is stored in this place because that's like one of the things that hackers and you know, malicious attackers leverage to be able to access people's things, uh, unfortunately. So that's what I would say. From a log perspective, I mean, I think it's really great like go in there and learn how those things work. And it may translate. You may find something that's like super cool that you can use to protect yourself better. Um, but yeah, that, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I think that's a great reminder to everyone. Password managers are fantastic in helping you keep all your passwords super secure. And you only have to remember that one password. I personally use a password manager and it is so helpful and it makes you feel safer on the internet. Um, and then going back to those logs, I think some of you in the audience might be learning about computer science or maybe even cybersecurity. I am curious what advice you would have for the students out there listening. You know, so we were talking about logs. You might be looking at debug logs for your computer science program. There's lots and lots of opportunities for this like cross translation. Um, but yeah, what advice would you give to the students out there today listening? Yeah, um, advice. Uh... I would say to try to find something in this field, if this truly interests you, uh, find something that you really enjoy to do. If that's solving puzzles from a coding perspective, right, where you enjoy writing code, spend all your time learning and master that. Like, that is so cool. I didn't have that love. I loved the analytical side of things, like being able to figure out what's wrong or what happened here. And that led me to loving what I do. So this is the same thing I tell my son all the time. You know, he gets interested in things and he's like looking at this video game and he loves it. And I'm like, well, why don't you figure out like how that's made? Um, you know, how that works. Use your curiosity to be able to answer those questions of like, why did this ball move from this location on screen to this other location? What, how does that happen? Um, so follow like what really brings you joy, because that's like, to me, the biggest goal ever is to work and do something that you actually enjoy to do as a career. Thank you so much, Chris. This has been such a fun conversation. And I hate to say we're at the end of our time. So we are going to just also thank all the teachers and students that have joined us here today. Um, remember that we have a lot more of these class chats coming up. So later this spring, you can watch more. We also have a lot of recorded ones from the past fall recordings. You can just go to code.org forward slash CS journeys to find all of those. And teachers will be sending out an email with a survey. If you could please fill out that survey, it really helps us and we so appreciate your feedback. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure, Chris, and great to see all the teachers and students here today. Thank you.